Right, okay. Uh, when you talk about golf coaching, there's no name more synonymous than uh, David Ledbetter over the past, is it, is it 30 years, David? Uh, probably more? close to 40, 40 I would say. Years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly, uh, there. yeah, I, I've been in the game a while. And uh, first of all, can I just say thank you for taking the time to have a, a chat with uh, the average golfer? It's a pleasure. Uh, first question I have for you is uh, I think I'm right in saying there's a few uh, facilities over in Florida. So, what are you doing over in the UK? in the first week of November? Uh, well, ostensibly we're here at Stoke Park right now to open our new indoor golf zone. And Golf Zone is a, a company in Korea and they're the biggest simulator company in the yep. world. And we've, we, we've got a, a simulator facility here now, which is tremendous really. I mean, you can play all these golf courses, you can get coaching on it. Uh, they've got elect an electronic lie board, so you actually change the lies uphill, downhill, yep. side hill. And it, it's phenomenal, really, and uh, uh, it's going to be a great amenity for Stoke Park. Uh, we we have all our coaches here trained on it, and um, so it's exciting, and uh, we're opening them all over the world. Uh, so in terms of Golf Zone, will that appear in some of your other academies? Is that the plan? <coughs> well, we've formed a partnership with Golf Zone now, and uh, they've actually bought a lot of, uh, well, all of our academies, so, yeah. so I'm there more on oh, a consultancy okay. basis yeah, yeah. now. So, so I'm excited about it because I do think that Simulators really are the wave of the future. I yeah. mean, if you think in terms of uh, in Korea, for instance, more than half the golfers play indoors. Eighty percent of the new golfers that play golf started indoors, and it's a. I won't say it's a different sport because actually it's 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 a lot of fun. It's a, um, you know you can play with your mates. You know you can take lessons, and uh, it's just a, a whole different way of going about it. I mean, instead of having these huge driving ranges that you've seen in, in Seoul and yeah, Tokyo. Um, yeah, yeah. The land's too expensive now, they don't yeah. do that. So they actually created these sort of almost practice areas where you have anything up to 20 simulators where you can go and practice working right. on your game and the numbers come up, how far you hit it, the club head speed, etc., etc. And so it's a, it really is, I'm excited about the fact that this is the first center we have um, uh, in in, in, in the UK and uh, so I hope people come along and just try it out because it's a, it's, it's great fun, yeah, well, it really is. I had to go earlier, there's some Im images going up over for you now and one of the, the, the key things for me that separates it from other simulators is this ability that, that the floor essentially slopes both yeah. forward, backwards and sideways and it, and it replicates real-time play. So as a golf coach, how does that assist you as a, golf, a coach then? Well, you know, there's, there's two ways of looking at golf instruction. One is that you're teaching somebody to swing the club, essentially, and teaching them fundamentals, not only the full swing, but the short game and padding. But then the other aspect to it, which I think is neglected to some extent, although obviously teaching pros do give playing lessons, but the, the playing side, teaching people to play the game, uh, understanding yeah, reality, the, yeah. yeah, understanding how how you hit a downhill lie yeah, or yeah. a side hill lie, or how you hit it out of thick rough, or what to expect. Yeah. I mean, people don't know that you know. For the, for instance, as you saw in a little demonstration this morning, that you know that when you got a downhill lie, seven eight degrees, say so, you know the ball's going to come out a lot lower. So yeah, you yeah. know, hey, if you've got a hazard in front of the green, you better take, you better make sure you take enough, you know, have enough loft on the cliff to yeah. get the ball out. Yeah, yeah. it's going to stay down. So it, it brings to life, I think, really what happens out, out on the golf course. And, and, and you can train people to sort of, let's say, within their capabilities to manage their game. Because yeah, yeah. most amateurs, I mean, if they, had, if they had a professional caddy with them, if they had a tour level type caddy, and once the caddy knew their game, um, they'd actually be able to help them manage their game to a point where they, they'd, they'd shoot lower scores just through course management course without management. changing anything about yeah, the swing. Yeah. But the great thing about it too is that uh, you know we, we can actually train people. For instance, you know somebody who has a very upright swing, we can set them on a lie, you know, with the ball with the, with the lie maybe up maybe ten degrees, and they hit balls, and it actually trains their swing plane to flatten them out. Yeah, and yeah. So, and maybe you, Without, could do, you could do that once or twice, maybe on the golf course. But yeah. if you've got people behind you, you've got to hurry up, and yeah. so it's not 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 conducive. And and, and I always it's always. It's always uh, funny to me when you think in terms of people complain of, you know, oh, well, our practice area is not flat. You know, there's a couple of ripples in it and yeah. what have you. And you think, well, that's reality. That's what the golf do you course, get when yeah. you get on the golf yeah, course? Yeah. You know, you got, okay, you, you want a perfectly flat lie yeah, everywhere you go. Well, that doesn't happen very yeah, often. Yeah. 
So, in, in, and I'm just interested in your thoughts on the, uh, the your, your coaching and your academies and your universities, do they all coach the same methods effectively from, is that well, how it works? The interesting or? thing is, yeah, we've, caught, we've formed the Lead Better Golf University and uh, it's really, there's a lot of different aspects to it. It's not just the technical side of things, that's one aspect of it, sure, it's a big part of it, but we have the biomechanics side of things, people like JJ Reve, who's one of the world's leading biomechanists who's involved, we've got the mental side of it, we've got, we've got top people involved uh, in the physical, the physical side of things. Uh, we've got really experts in their field who are actually uh, imparting their knowledge to actually help coaches, teachers really become top draw in their field. Yeah, uh, yeah. And because I say, if we're going to grow the game, you know, it's really important that we have good coaching, good teaching. I mean, and uh, this starts off at a very young age. We have the Lead Better Kids program, which we've got kids from the age of four starting. Yeah. You know, all over the world we've got these little group starting and they, it, you're sort of trained to be better athletes and you, with a golf theme. Oh, right. And so um, we, as, from a technical standpoint, we don't have really a method, we have a philosophy okay. because I, I actually encourage our teachers and coaches because they all may be strong in, in different areas Some, and as players are, they may, some, some players are more technical, some teachers are more technical, some players are more feel oriented, some teachers are more feel oriented. So we, using, using the background of science and uh, my philosophy, mm. uh, we have a wide ranging group of, uh, we have over ooh, about 110 instructors worldwide now at our 40 odd academies around the world. And so uh, they, they each have a, a slightly different look, take on things. I mean, people th see things a little yeah, differently. Yeah. Well, uh, but the, the message, the message is essentially yeah, the yeah. same and there'll be a theme that runs okay. through this. So it's, it's more of a philosophy than a method. Is it fair to say in, in your 30, 40 years, you've always been fairly progressive in terms of you've, you've, you've moved the goalpost in terms of your coaching has always moved forward and, and been very progressive. How would you describe coaching in general at the moment as a outside of the Lead Better Academy, let's say. Is it? it's, a, it's a very interesting question, that, because I think we're in the age of technology, yeah. okay? We've got launch monitors, you know, you've got these guys with these orange machines, uh, I won't say the name of them, but anyway, <laughs> out on, you know, on, on the yeah, ranges yeah. and what have you, and they're used for different reasons, you know. I think they're, they're very, very good, and, you know, obviously you can work on your wedge play distance and you can work with us to see this new driver is spinning too much or if it, how far it's carrying and so on, and... And if you've got your own numbers for your own swing, when things get a little off, you can say, well, listen, now I'm, a little, I'm two degrees more from the inside than I, yeah, yeah. Than I am uh, when I'm playing my best. So um, I think it's, you know, to me, it's great. Uh, this technology is wonderful, but we have to remember, we mustn't lose sight of the fact that they're tools. Okay. They're tools of the trade, okay? It's very much like when video really became very prominent. Uh, video is a huge huge help, but still is, uh, especially for very visual people who like to so see what's going yeah, on. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's a, big, a big, big plus. Um, but I think one of the dangers is that a lot of young teachers now, they're getting so much of this technology into their heads that they can't really express themselves and they're not using instinct uh, yes. to actually to get the message across. So in, in some regards, I mean, I'm actually pleased I grew up in the area where we didn't even have video cameras or, you yeah, know, yeah. We had city film, and if you you know if the thing thing worked, I mean you know, and when we when we did get video, there were these big clunking VHS yeah. things that you know. So you very carry. much not seeing it, you noticing what was happening in certain positions, was it at that? Point? Right, exactly, exactly. And so we, I mean, so I mean, we use obviously technology a lot. We, I mean, I'm really into now uh, through JJ Reve force plates. These things you stand on, and you actually see how your balance is moving. It's yeah. fascinating to see how the way your balance moves affects what the swing's doing. Okay. So, so you change the way that your balance is through your feet and yeah. the way that you stand to the ball. I mean, even so much so that now we've got, even here at Stoke Park, we've got, we're gonna have where a, a situation where you can actually get orthotics fitted, yeah, yeah. okay, where... Well, I just had this done, by the way, this afternoon. Yeah, yeah it's really interesting. It's really thing, interesting, yeah. where, because you know, everybody's feet are different yeah, and yeah. the way you set up to it. I mean, if you've got too much weight on your toes and it's affecting your swing or too much weight on your heel yeah. or whatever the case may be because balance is important. Yeah. So, you know, so technology is wonderful, it's great, but it's got to be used in the right way and I think it's really important. I mean, I get all our coaches and teachers part of the program that they go through because the, we have a strict certification, but part of it, they, they go through teaching probably for a month without any video. They've got to use their eyes, yeah, they've got to use yeah. their instincts, their intuition yeah. because, I mean, there's times where, you know, I, I see things 
I don't need a video camera. I don't need um, force plates. I don't need. I'm not, you know, trying to. No, no, you can boost see my ego here. But I've, I've seen, know, it, I've yeah. seen so many swings and yeah. so many good swings and so many bad swings too through the years. Yeah. Like, you can know what's going. You have an instinct to feel for it. And I think, you know, a lot of the great teachers of yesterday, people like John Jacobs. I mean, had that had that instinct to be able to sort of recognize get it. to the root cause yeah, of the problem yeah. and recognize it. And in the yeah. end. For most golfers, you don't have a whole lot of time to play and practice anyway. You've got to keep it pretty damn simple. Yeah. Okay, you can't make it so complicated yeah. and so theoretical that they get tied up in knots. I mean, yeah. it's a game where people get paralysis through analysis in most cases. Yeah. So you have to keep it simple. And I, the thing I always emphasize if with all our coaches is that you know, hey, understand what you're doing, teach it simply, and give people feel for what they're doing. Yeah. Feel is very different to thought. Yeah. Well, I think that what you explained earlier about using that. Um, the, the moving um, floor plates was a great plates. way to do things like that. I think, yeah, right, absolutely, it? because it, it just it gives you an awareness. Wow, okay, if you know a slicer, for instance, I mean, you can see the weight goes, you know, yeah. to the right toe and then back to the heel very early. Now, if you can change that weight yeah. distribution where it's moving from the heel on the right foot to the toe of the of the left foot, yeah. all of a sudden you're changing the movement pattern, which in turn changes the swing yeah, path. Yeah, and it's understanding the, that sensation in your brain, isn't it? As yeah, the golfer, I absolutely. Suppose. That's the big key. Um, I, I mentioned to you, I, I look at everything or review everything my channel is about the average golfer. Um, at the moment, I think it's life is, everyone's got limited time on their hands. And it's a vague question, I think, but what elements of the game should average golfers perhaps concentrate on, do you think, to help them become, or help them to score better? Is there a, is there a particular area? You know, golf is a, I mean, look, let's face it, you, you can't become the best golfer you can be if you're only playing once a month. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it it's just no two ways yeah. to it. I mean, you, you, you've got to, you know, find a little time. So, I mean, depending, if you've got limited time, I would say absolutely work on your short game. and and. And I would, I would really uh, wholeheartedly advise people to take a couple of lessons on the short game. I mean, people don't take lessons enough yeah. on the short game. I mean, they take lessons on the long game. They, you know, the they, they want to drive it a yeah, yeah. long way and yeah. or cure their slice. But you know, if you take if you take instruction from sort of sixty yards and in, I mean, that's really where you're going to see real improvement in your scoring. Yeah. You know, well, the pitching, the, the chipping, the bunker play, the yeah. putting. I mean, just you know, get some and ideas. Shots, kind of thing. Yeah, well, yeah, all these little approach shots to the green because. Look, there's a reason why you have handicaps, right? You don't hit every green regulation, yeah, yeah. right? I mean, so, you know, you're going to get a par four that you can't get within 50 yards of the green yeah. for some people. So, hey, if, you, if, you're, if you're a decent enough wedge player, yeah, yeah, you know, you've still, still got a chance to make a par. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say put some, put some emphasis there. And when you can, even take a golf club and just go and swing out in the garden. Keep the old muscles loose. Yeah. You know, as we get older, we get stiffer, right? If you don't... As they say, the old adage, you don't, you know, you don't use them, you lose them. So, yeah, yeah. you know, get those golf muscles working, keep, and maybe use a, you know, a, a weighted club where you can sort of get the muscles stretched out. And yeah. uh, just, if you did that five, ten minutes a couple of times a week, you'd be amazed how you keep the swing in a groove. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you a question. You did, because you, you, there were an advocate of a... Uh, swing setter. Swing setter, that's yeah, it. With the two yeah, with two magnets on. Yeah, right, right, right. And, and again, when did that, when did you first bring that first edition out or were involved in Wow, well, that, that's been out uh, probably about... Uh, I would say we're probably talking 12 to 15 years ago now in that era and that, it was really popular because you know yeah. it, it essentially had it. two magnets yeah. right you know it, it clicked on the back yeah, swing you and there, yeah. as you as you set the club yeah. okay and then it clicks at impact yeah. so it sort of went click click and you could increase the tension depending on All right, okay, uh, right, so yeah. if you to increase your club head speed obviously you get more speed so yeah. you just increase the tension of the magnets uh, at the bottom and it was really good because it, it really simplified things because people would practice with it and they'd sort of go click 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 you know yeah. make 30 40 swings and without realizing it it became sort of a you know a sound in their mind that yeah. even when they were playing that here click, click. It, yeah. so well, it's a muscle memory thing again I suppose yeah, yeah absolutely so yeah you know, I've always been a big uh, um, proponent of um, First of all, drills, yeah. okay, little drills and exercises to help people get a feel for it. But, and then, secondly, I brought out a number of teaching aids through the years yeah. to sort of help foster that well, feel. Well, I, I think that's where the question was, really, was that you, you seem, again, to when, when I've read back at the things that you've done, you were always sort of moving forward in terms of, uh, whether it be uh, swing setter or video content from many years ago, you were at the forefront of that. And why did you, how did you, how did that happen? Well, first of all, you have to understand I'm a failed tour player. Okay, so I mean, and 
you know, I, I, I missed my tour card for Europe. It was a year, you know, so we're, we're dating ourselves now, but it was a year Sandy Lyle won. He, he won it at Fox Hills and I missed my card by a shot. Okay. But so, so not that we had any comparison from a skill level, but you know, it sort of set my mind to a point where, well, maybe, you know, and I'd always, I mean, I'd, I'd been teaching this game since I was 18, uh, off right. and on. I okay. mean, so always, I, I turned pro when I was, I was young, yeah. Right. And so I, um, yeah, so it's 40 years plus that I've been teaching. I forget, you know, years fly by. But so I've always enjoyed teaching and trying to help people. And I've always had a very inquisitive mind. And so yeah. trying to find better ways of doing things to help people, to get that message across, yeah. as I mentioned a moment ago. So it's, uh, and, and, and it's, to me, you know, it's, it's never been like a job to me. It's always, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I mean, where else can you get a job which is satisfying by helping people? You get paid for doing what you love to yeah. do, and you're involved in the game, which yeah. you know I've been involved with for many, many years. But uh, you know, yet again, forty years on or whatever it is, and this golf zone is a new thing again. So it's just testament to the fact that you have kept uh, moving forward. Yeah, I, I guess thing. it's uh, you know it is you know you uh, you know it's I guess these sort of things keep you young, and uh, yeah. you know it's nice to mix with some of these younger tour players, yeah. and so that's. Yeah, I still enjoy that side of the game. I, I, I don't do quite as much as I used to, but I still have a, quite a few players I work with on the on the yeah. European tour, the US, and the, and the LPGA tour. So it's it's fun. Fantastic. Um, and the the future of coaching. Do you have any sort of? Do you think this is going to go more into the 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 indoor stimulator thing? Do you think that's a, a, a the sort of next thing forward? Is that going to grow? I think simulator golf is really going to grow. I, I think that you know, I mean, there's a number of simulator companies out there now, but you know, we're going to be doing instructional programs within Golf Zone, so people can you know go and, go and work on the get go and say play a game of golf, but also prior to that they can have some instruction because you know only a limited number of people take lessons. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it, it's it, I mean in America, I think the number is less than five percent of golfers take lessons. Is it really? Yeah, I mean, and so when you think in terms of that, and golf is a it requires good technique. Okay, yeah. it's one of those it's one of those. Uh, um, sports or entities that really requires good technique to to play well, and yeah. if, you, if your technique is good, you can play well for many a year yeah, as long yeah. as you're reasonably fit. Yeah. And so, uh, I, but I do think that simulators really is a sort of a, the wave of the future, and I'm excited to be part of it because it's a, it just it allows us to carry on this great game. We've got to think of ways how we can keep growing this game. Well, you know, there's not a lot, not a lot of land out there. Yeah. Okay, to, to build golf courses, but golf courses are expensive. So how do we keep the game grow, going, yeah. and growing, and so and bring younger people into the game? And, and I think that's, that's, the, that's fun a key to point. Well, that's the bit. I think what it also does it brings a bit of fun to the lessons, but it also I think it's something that kids understand. Whether you're playing on a, a TV game, so the simulator bit really resonates with what they're it does. familiar with as well. So I, I mean, it golf a fun. golf is time consuming. People yeah. don't have a lot of time these days yeah. in this day and age, you know, yeah. and so. If you can go around and play, you know, full round of golf in a couple of hours and do it yeah, with the yeah. family and uh, yeah. enjoy it, I mean, hey, it's I think it's, it's really going to help the game good. grow. Uh, just a couple of questions on uh, product technology uh, in our products. Now I review some uh, golf products. And when I started playing, I probably had half a set of a pitching wedge and a sand wedge. Now everybody, the contents I get, they want to carry five wedges. They want <laughs> a wedge for every yardage, and uh, and again the half set thing. Do you think that? That would be. Do you think people learn to play golf better then, in terms of being able to do different things with the ball? And well, yes, I think that. Look, I think I don't think a lot of amateurs realise. You know, if you have a sixty-four degree sandwich, you know, or even a sixty degree for that matter, you, it takes quite a bit of practice and know how yeah. how to use that club. Yeah. And it's interesting when you talk to people. You know, obviously, club manufacturers love it because they're selling more clubs, but. Uh, and, and I say it certainly has its place. I mean, all these different wedges for sure. But you know, when you look at, I remember I spoke to Tom Watson, oh, maybe a couple of years ago, and he only had thirteen clubs in his bag. Yeah. You know, he, he yeah, actually yeah. only a fifty-six was as, that was the highest lofted club yeah. he had. And yeah. I always remember asking Seve years ago. I said, "You ever try a sixty-degree?" Seve says he Open went like this with a face. Yeah, Seve. yeah. I know need 60. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. so I, I think it's, uh, I mean, I, I'm a big advocate actually of juniors, young players, not actually having all these wedges. Yeah. I think they can, they learn to 
control the club face, yeah. even with about a 52 degrees yeah. uh, wedge, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, which we're going back in the day now, yeah, yeah. back to, not, not quite back to niblicks, but uh, the fact is they can start to, you know, they, they've got to, I mean, look, great short game players, exponents, have great hands, they're yeah. able to sort of do certain bit, things, yeah, you know, look at a Phil Mickelson or, yeah, yeah. or Tiger, yeah. whoever, and so um, <clears throat> they're able to do certain things, but if you if you just have a, a club for every for every loft, yeah. so, sorry, uh, sorry, a loft for it, a it's loft for club for every swing. every distance, yeah. uh, it, it sort of takes a little bit of the feel and the skill yeah. out of what I you want to so. do. So I, I, you know, so I mean, I mean, a lot of people, you know, play some really good golf with half a set. I'm not advocating to do that. I mean, because you know, I'm, I'm a, a brand yeah, ambassador yeah. for yeah. Callaway, and yeah. so I mean, but I mean, we're seeing now. Look, there's there's more hybrids involved in the game yeah. now, okay? Because I mean. Most golfers, you know, a three or a four iron is a complete yeah. waste of time. And so um, uh, well, hybrids are now are playing a bigger role. So, uh, yeah, I mean, equipment's important, but I think, you know, having, I think it's also important to sort of, uh, you know, from a, the wedge standpoint that uh, young players in particular learn to create some feel yeah, and then, then maybe work into the sort of yeah. the high lofted wedges. I've literally got a couple more questions on um, golf clubs again. Uh, just last question on that. They've become very expensive to buy. And uh, if if a golfer wants to invest in a club, would it be the driver, wedges, putter? What would he be best spending his money on? Is there an answer to that question? Uh, uh, well, I'd say first of all, I I, I think that people don't pay enough attention to having a putter that properly fits yeah, yeah. them. Yeah. Okay. I think you know a lot of players. I mean, they just like the look of it, which is fine. I mean, that's that's a big part of putter selection, the, yeah. the look and the feel of it. But you know, you've got to. You know, get yourself fitted for a putter. Get yourself yes. into where, where you know the, uh, your coach, your teacher, or a, a qualified PJ professional says, "Okay, let me see you set up to it," and then fit the putter to them. Yeah. Okay. It's it's yeah. it's not quite like fitting an iron. Yeah. Uh, or, or a driver because yeah. we know. I mean, it's not a dynamic movement putting. I mean, it's just making a stroke, but. Uh, and so, getting set up to the ball, you know, almost fitting the putter to the posture is really important. So I, I would say putter absolutely. Um, I think each each. I mean, look, it's too vague of a question. Yeah, it's it's well, it's a very yeah. broad yeah, question I because that. I mean, sandwich for instance. I mean, a lot of amateurs would do well with a wide base with sole, bounce, okay, yeah, yeah. because they can utilize some of the bounce. Yeah, yeah. Um, irons, I mean, for sure. I mean, look, we don't. Although they might look good to you know average players, a blade yeah. iron is a complete waste of time because the sweet spot's about, yeah. you know, like a pinhead. Yeah, okay, I so I mean, that. when Perimeter Weighted Club came in years ago, I mean, it really was a big help. And, you know, these days, certainly with the driver, I think uh, the driver's really important uh, from a standpoint of, I don't think players generally pay enough loft, uh, play, uh, have enough loft, loft on their price, club. Okay. I mean, to be able to get, increase the launch angle. Right. And so, I mean, adjustable drivers now are, are great. I mean, they yeah, can yeah. actually, yeah, you know, custom fit is, is massive, isn't it? Absolutely. Making yeah. sure that you are custom. So it's, uh, I mean, so I think that, you know, I mean, look, you, you, I would say, look, you're not going to walk into a shoe shop, give me give me a pair of size nine, please, and walk out with them, right? I mean, Make well, sure maybe, right. maybe you're an eight and a half, maybe you're a nine and a half, who knows? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, so you, you getting getting clubs that fit you. Is the important bit. Yeah, I, I would say that. You know, yeah, I remember years and years ago. I went to when I first went to America. I went to a company called Hillerick and Bradsby, okay, which was the name of the, the club was Power Built. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah Fuzzy Zeller, yeah, yeah, he was yeah. he was there. Yeah. He was their sort of guy. And I remember speaking to the whatever the president or whatever he was, and he said, "Well, we 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 work on the fact that all the clubs that we sell in pro shops will suit ninety percent of golfers, okay." And that was Ping's theory for many years. I mean, you know, it's like they might have made them a little bit longer, but I mean, essentially they had one shot that fits everybody. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like it's nonsense. And it's because now, I mean, it's the exact opposite. I it mean, is, you've yeah. got clubs on a shelf. Yeah, they'll probably the suit maybe five to ten percent yeah, of yeah. golfers. You know, yeah. so it is important. I mean, even the fact you know I'm with Golf Pride, the grip company. Getting the right grip thickness is important. If you yeah. have too thin a grip, too thick a grip. The way you place your hands on the club is totally different. Yeah. And even the material, I mean, if you're playing in the UK or in hot, sweaty climates, you need a, a grip that's not going to slip. So, you know, club, club fitting is really important now. Yeah, uh, well, I think we'll, we'll, that's the key message, I think, from that question. It's definitely custom fit. And I'm going to ask the last question. Uh, 
if you could have coached anybody, past or present, golfers, is there an answer to that one, or would you rather me not ask you that? Yeah, I always get that. I, I get that question asked a lot, and it's, it's, I mean, I, I've never come up with a satisfactory answer, because, you know, <laughs> as a coach and a teacher, you'd love to teach a multitude of talented players okay. and say, well, listen, obviously I'd like to coach Tiger Woods, okay, and uh, I did give him one lesson when he was 17, I think, yeah, 16 yeah. or 17, and he was living in California, and we just... Didn't just didn't pan out, and that's actually after that he went to work with Butch Harmon, so he made a good choice at the time. But you know, look, I I think as a coach and a teacher, um, I, I think you'd. Um, I, I mean, I'm happy. I, I've had the good fortune you of working with seven goals. world number one yeah, players. Yeah. We've won 23 majors or whatever the case, something like that. And so I, I've I've been very fortunate to be involved with these players, and uh, so. I don't sort of look around and say, oh, I wish I could work with yeah, that. I mean, you look at certain players and you say, okay, well, this player's playing poorly, could I help them? Yeah. And I'd say, yeah, it's possible. I mean, I've started working now with Charles Schwartzel, for instance, who, to me, had one of the best swings in golf mm. and lost his way. And he got an injury and stuff. So, you know, working with Charles now, who's won a major, won the Masters, you know, that's going to be exciting to see what we can do if I can get him back get him somewhere back. to where he was and see what happens mm. in the next couple of years. So... So, you know, I never sort of think, oh, if only. And so I, well, I think probably I have had probably more than my fair share of really say, great players I've been lucky be enough to work with, yeah. you know. And so we've helped my careers probably as much as I've helped theirs. So. Fantastic. Well, brilliant. Oh, well, look, thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you. It's my pleasure. pleasure to meet you. Thank you. And uh, good luck. Keep on pushing them boundaries forward in the years ahead. Oh, we will. Well, you know, I'll probably, in my dying breath, I'll be... Boy, I just <laughs> get that right out of <laughs> Right, as ever, thank you for watching. Comments down below, and uh, I'll see you all soon.